So thank you very much, uh, David. So now we'll move on to Nikki as well. Um, also, Nikki is very experienced uh, with the FRCS education, doing it for years. And also her presentation is very popular on, this is about the VIVA component of the exam. Uh, we can't teach you everything about clinicals or VIVA, but these skills, um, you know, take clear, years of practice to learn. So please uh, uh, listen to Nikki. Go ahead, Nikki. Lovely. And just before Nikki starts, just another reminder, I'm going to send your breakout room allocations through now. Do not accept until 10.30. Thank you. Thanks, Ruth. Thanks, Vera. Thanks, David. Good morning, everyone. Um, so this is kind of a lecture that um, just some things that I found helpful going for exams. Um, and a lot of it will reiterate what David and Firas have already said, but also some things that you might want to take into account for your own personal well-being during this stressful time. So we've got 10 tips. Um, and there's a lot of resources. So on our website, we've got lots of um, re lectures recorded. And these are some of the ones that I use. And there's also some tips in the download section. So the first thing is that you need to have knowledge, but knowledge alone is not enough. <clears throat> Preparation is the key. So things like the FRCS critical conditions, you need to know them inside out because that will be a pass fail scenario. Um, and really, if you miss something like that, then there's no coming back from it. You need to be aware of the latest boast and nice guidelines if you're doing the UK exams and I guess we always used to say, think of the common cases in the clinicals because you had to um, have a patient that could be examined all day, but given that it's now photographs and actors, it could actually be anything. But, you know, there are common things. So shoulder problems, you wanna look for instability, rotator cuff, shoulder arthritis, make sure you can nail those ones off. Um, if you don't know the answer to a question and it will happen, then you need to be able to fall back on your basic principles. Listen carefully to the, to the question um, and always maintain that you're going to keep the patient safe and that you're going to show respect for your colleagues. So um, some things that I found useful. So when you go to these places, so I think the last one was in Glasgow, Work out where you're going to stay. Make sure you book your hotel early. Make it nice, is what I said. Plan where you're going to eat. Pack an extra shirt. Plan how you're going to get to and from the venue if you need to. What time you need to leave. Where you're going to park. Are you going to get a taxi and things like that. Um, and the day before. So it's not a good idea to drink alcohol or take drugs the night before the exam. <clears throat> Um, I think it still needs to be said. <laughs> um, check your outfit. So your suit, your shirt, your tie, make sure you polish your shoes. It's up to you whether you find it helpful to read notes the night before or not to read notes. And then there's this concept of gratitude. So, you know, you're here doing this exam. You, sh you need to be grateful that you're here. This is what you've been working your whole life towards and you've reached this level. Um, so, you know, remember, it's good that you're there and, you know, thank whatever your higher power is um, that you're there and just do a final check on the timing and where you need to be. So there's no mess ups on the day. So on the day of the exam, I would say get up early, travel and arrive there early, have a shower and shave if you need to make sure you dress well. Um, now, whether you talk to the other candidates or whether you don't talk to the other candidates, it's entirely up to you. <clears throat> make sure you've been to the toilet, make sure you've cleaned your fingernails, uh, have your mask ready and breath fresheners if you need them. So in general, basically you wanna smile and you wanna be respectful. Um, listen to the question that you're being asked and close your mouth before you vomit out a whole load of stuff that you want to say but may not be directly relevant. And if you need to do things like counting and deep breathing to help with your anxiety, then <clears throat> make sure you're familiar with them before you go into the exam. So, um, again, this is a little bit... Um, different now but you the principles remain the same and that you need to be polite and respectful um introduce yourself if there's another examiner there 
keep your history focused, but make sure you show active listening. Don't do anything that hurts the patient. So if they tell you this patient presents with a very painful shoulder, I wouldn't say, you know, oh, well, I'd lift their arm up to 180 degrees because that would be a sign that you weren't really listening. Um, demonstrate the signs that um, you need to and show that you know how to look for important signs or red flags. So as David said with the ACL, you're probably not going to examine the examiner's leg for an ACL, but you want to be able to describe exactly how you're going to do it and why um, the Lockman's test is positive and the principles behind it. And make sure you thank everyone. Um, again, be respectful. Same as David said, don't argue with the examiner. Listen to their question. They will give you hints. Normally you get one or two hints and then that will end. So if they do pull you up, listen to it. I think in the old days, there used to be this concept of mean examiners going, are you sure? But I don't think that's as common as it used to be. So just listen to the hints and maybe rethink your answer. Um, I would ignore the second examiner in the Bible. He'll be frantically writing. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, so just block him out of your vision for the time being. Avoid any body language, um, you know, that might put you in a bad light. So facial grimaces, fiddling or sitting back in your chair looking uninterested. Um, I don't know whether we've got iPads at the moment, but if they are using them, then don't touch the iPad with your sweaty fingers. Use a pen or a pencil. And if you don't know the answer to a question or you think one question's gone badly, regroup and move on. So a few words on anxiety, because obviously this is a very stressful situation. Um, and there's lots of apps that you can use. So most of them are free. Um, but things like breathing, mindfulness, reimagine the situation, you know. I was always told, imagine it's a dinner party with, you know, your colleagues and you're just having a discussion. Um, I accept the situation, you know, this is where you want it to be. And so you're going to do it to the best of your ability and enjoy the game. I mean, you want to show your knowledge. The examiner wants you to show them your knowledge and wants to pass you. Um, so it is a game and just remember to enjoy it as much as you can. Afterwards, you don't have to talk to the other candidates. You can if you want to. You need to relax. You need to accept that it's been done and put it to one side. You need to look after yourself. Go and spend time with your family because you've probably neglected them while you've been studying. And if you pass, that's fantastic. Come and join us. And if you fail, wait till you get the feedback because the area where you thought you went wrong is it's unusual that that's the area it'll be something else and then regroup yourself and plan for your next attack so having said all of that good luck everyone i'm sure you'll be fine thank you that was brilliant uh, nikki it's really, really 10 golden rules of um, how to approach the exam it's very very useful i kept uh, learning from them <laughs>